get ready because we're celebrating five incredible years of The Main Health Show. It's more than just a hair show. It's a platform where we dive into topics that truly matter, just like your favorite barbershop or beauty salon. We cover a wide variety of issues that impact each and every one of us. Join me, Stephanie Anderson, host of The Main Health Show, as we celebrate five years of empowerment, education, and inspiration. Don't miss out on the incredible insights and transformative conversations that await you on The Main Health Show. Welcome to The Main Health Show. I'm your host, Stephanie Anderson. And today, we are going to continue our conversation with Mr. Jason Frey. And on this episode, he is being joined by his lovely wife and partner, Mrs. Lorena Frey. Mrs. Frey is not a stranger to The Main Health Show. On a previous episode, she shared her experience and work as a human rights advocate for refugee survivors of trafficking. Lorena is a retired professional from the San Bernardino County Juvenile Justice Program, a licensed clinical therapist and international speaker. With a Master of Science degree in Counseling Psychology, she passionately advocates for the human rights of children affected by generational abuse and trafficking. She has trained numerous clinicians, law enforcement officers, and community professionals on effectively supporting this vulnerable population. As a national speaker, she addressed the complex changes and challenges these children and trauma survivors face, including her notable talks, how you can be, how you can break free from the shackles of trauma, which was her TEDx Barrowdale talk, and trigger warning, the negative and positive debate, which was a global speaker's talk presentation. Today, Lorna joins us alongside of her husband, Jason. They have been married for 30 years and have two children. During Jason's deployment as part of Operation Iraqi Freedom, Lorena used her psychology training to support their young children and the families of other soldiers in Jason's unit, showcasing her dedication to mental health and family support within the military communities. Please help me welcome them both back, Jason and Lorena Frey, to the Main Health Show. Hello, Jason and Lorena. Hi, Thanks, thank you for having us back. Thank you. Yes. Well, our previous episode, I had an opportunity to talk about uh, your husband's illustrious career in both the military and law enforcement, and then his uh, platform and what he does for PTSD. Today, equally important, I wanted to to come on as well, even though you were previous guest mm -hmm. and you talked about the human trafficking. You guys do a lot, do a <laughs> lot, do. yes, in serving the community and the people, vulnerable people who need your help. But today, I wanted to kind of piggyback off of what Jason and I talked about, and we're going to talk about the deployments that the military personnel goes on. We really don't think about it much, but when mm -hmm. deployments happen, for that service member, if they have a family, that family is left behind. And um, sometimes we don't wonder what happens during the deployment mm -hmm. or what happens once that service member comes back. So I wanted to kind of have you to come in and you guys have a kind of conversation, discussion about what mm -hmm. it is that you do to support those have done in the past, mm -hmm. what it is that you guys have experienced because you went on three deployments oh, yeah. um, and, and had small children at the time. Yes. So kind of share what it is that you do for families. and. Well, at the time that the, the war broke out, uh -huh. uh, it was a new thing. Yeah. The last war before that, uh, we before the Iraq War, mm -hmm. was Vietnam. Yes. So from Vietnam to the Iraq War, society wasn't ready for a war. Yeah. So there were no support systems for mm. that type, that, that, I guess you can say the dynamics mm -hmm. of what happens pre-deployment, mm. post-deployment. And um, so pre-deployment was talking to families. And I remember because they're, they were special operators, yeah. so couldn't talk about what they were going to do. The mission, yeah. We just knew they were going to be gone. Yeah. The war hadn't started. Yeah. And what happened was they they left. Mm -hmm. 
And all we knew was they said, the, the famous military saying, no news is good news. To this day, it triggers me. I know he talked about <laughs> triggers. triggers. It just triggers me. Yes. It's like, ah. Yeah. But the, uh, the military had us. Uh, actually, they appointed me family support group leader. Okay. Um, Jason was the youngest commanding officer um, at the time, actually, wow. to go into that type of situation, okay. a war. Okay. And so they thought, well, she has psychology background, and okay. she talks to people about uh -huh. problems. Yes. Let her do this. Okay. And I thought, okay, uh -huh. how, how bad can it be, right? Yeah. There's no war going. I just yeah. know that something's going to happen, and this is going to be spectacular, and mm -hmm. wow. What a career opener. Yeah. I was not expecting what opened that door. Wow. Um, they were already gone, and so now we hear there's a war. Mm. I'm like, oh, my God, my husband's there. Yeah. And so uh, one of the things they told us, they, particularly me, because I talked to the civilian spouses, yes. um, don't promise your soldier, don't promise your ch children that the soldier will come back. Wow. And I was like, okay, I've got to do this. Yes. And then one time I was driving and I realized I'm talking about my husband mm -hmm. and I'm talking about my children. Yes. And what am I going to tell them? Yes. So um, that kind of hit me yeah. and I said, oh my gosh, how I'm feeling is yes. probably how these spouses also. Yes. So you were a spouse yourself in that situation, yes. helping other spouses. Yes, yes. and, and I ended children. up calling them, uh -huh. supporting them through the process, because I felt what I was feeling was mm -hmm. the same thing they were going yes. through. So it's like, okay, let's talk about kids. Mm -hmm. Now we had children that the news covered this horribly. Yeah. I mean, we Our see it happen group. now. We can't yes. trust what they say. Yeah. So back then, it, it was very similar. Yes. They were reporting things that weren't actual. Yes. And because I, we were able to, con no cell phones really at that time. Oh, yes. It was very, the flip, the, yeah. the flippies. Yeah, those, oh, flip I phones. love those. <laughs> but, um, we're so, dating ourselves. We remember it well. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, we were able to contact the Red Cross if there was any family emergencies. Okay. However, uh, we they had satellite phones that were able to call. Um, very, uh, there had time periods that okay. we would talk to them, which was not often. Okay. So we had children mm -hmm. that missed their dads and yes. they weren't around. Mm -hmm. And very, very few female soldiers went into the special operator um, uh, uh, or unit that he was in. Okay. Uh, but so it was a lot of moms that were home with young children. Mm. The young children are going to go through very many different stages. Yes. And so, they were having problems in school. And uh, the segment that you had with Jason, yes. I, re I recall you said, even in Vietnam, they were calling them, oh, they're out there, baby killers. Yes. Well, my son had an experience with that because not everyone oh, was supportive. supportive. Of the military. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, you wow. have your freedom to say what you want. And here's these guys dying for your, dying for your ability to do this. Yes. So our son was really wow. had a hard time. The yeah. school, I can say they were partially supportive, okay. but I think only when I got involved. Okay. And uh, my kids can see that. They're like, wow. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really hard because schools, teachers, they had to be involved with, I think, have the relationship mm -hmm. of spouses whose husbands or, or wives yeah. were deployed. Yes. Because otherwise they don't understand. No They're going to listen to the news. Yes. Yes. And it's going to really, unfortunately, target the children. Yes. Oh. And so I had to step in. There was many um, children that were um, having difficulties in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, they would hear things at school. They would hear things um, on the television. Yeah. And so, How do you protect them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really hard. So uh, even now I say, you know, we, we don't watch the news. We don't yeah. really watch TV much yeah. because of that. Yeah. So uh, supporting your children through that is an awful lot of praying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just talking to them, asking them how they're feeling. We would make cards. Okay. And at that time, what I did know that they were 
I was tasked to do, uh -huh. which were the pioneers in bringing kind of like the video recordings okay. of childbirths uh -huh. and different Ooh, things like, yeah, okay. because they didn't have to that. To keep them connected. Yes. So we had some of the births, births okay. happen with mm -hmm. your unit okay. and we're able to, um, Get, get those recordings or okay. have that soldier somewhere with a satellite phone yes. during this happening. Yeah. Oh, so that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I can imagine on the other end, an active someone on active deployment receiving a video of a birth or maybe being able to celebrate something going on at home yes. was a positive distraction. What would you say, Jason? Yes, and what we have to remember is with wars, yes. it depends where you're at in the phase of the war okay. as what support is there. Okay. So for Iraq and the initial push, mm -hmm. the invasion, there wasn't established mail services. Mm -hmm. They would take oh. weeks. Okay. Phone connectivity wasn't yeah. there. Wow. So if you didn't have access to a satellite phone, right. you didn't have any communication. Wow. And there was a lot of limboness for the family. Mm. So then as things developed and more communication became, you could see the morale change. Okay. But here's a, another interesting part if you think about uh -huh. this. The soldier's role, okay. he, he or she is deployed. They're in a combat environment. Yeah, they have a mission. It is sometimes easier to be in war than to be back home. Okay. There, you have a very specific mission. Back home, yeah. oh, it, it, it's changed. Mom, dad, yeah. you know, kids with, with needs and yeah. wants and yeah. different things like that. Yeah. Stresses from all oh, over fine. school, work, yeah. uh, the, hey, can you do this on top of that? The honeydew list yeah. and <laughs> all these different things. Yeah. And, and they're two very different mentalities. Yes. So whereas a lot of soldiers will actually disconnect they're like, mm -hmm. let me just stay focused on my okay. mission there. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'll reintegrate when I come home. Wow. Okay. So kind of like if we think of like a plug and play, yes. well, I'll unplug. I'll disconnect. And yeah. I'm just going to be over there doing my job. Yeah. And then I'll just come back in. But yeah. what they failed to remember okay. is you talked pre-deployment, post-deployment, but there's deployment. Yes. There's that time frame. And yeah. whoever's home mm -hmm. is holding the pieces together. Yes. And That's... day by day is changing. Yeah. Things are happening. So yes. that soldier mentality of all come back and plug and play. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They're coming back to a different different yeah. atmosphere. Yes. yes, definitely. Yes. That spouse, those children, yeah. they've evolved. Yes. That soldiers had some changes as Everyone well. Everyone has changed. Yeah. yeah. And and to to speak to that, they come back. Mm -hmm. When they left, mm -hmm. it's almost like time stood still for them yes. at that point. They come back, their kids are older, because yeah. they were a year. Yes. They were one year wow. out. So they come back. They, some kids didn't recognize the parent oh, because gosh. they were too. They were young. Uh -huh. If they were seven months old yeah. when they left, eight yeah. months, yeah. they came back a year later yeah. while well, the child's yeah. grown. Yeah doesn't know. And we didn't have the cell phones that they yes. could look at and stuff. So, or way you, different you know, than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for them coming back and I, I, I thank God that I, I had that, uh, marriage family therapist okay. background okay. because I already knew, well, you know, things happen. It's mm -hmm. interesting because you think about someone that gets imprisoned, uh -huh. Their time stays still when they come back and it, everything is expected same. to be the same, yeah, they do. but it's not because it's, it's different. Yes. Same with them. Even the spouse is different yes. because you've had yes. um, responsibilities of being the both. wife. I mean, the, you know, being the parent, both parents. And yes. the, yeah, so everything changes. Yeah, and so I was able to talk to, uh, I call them young, young wives, young okay. spouses, uh -huh. and let them know, okay, you, you know how things were before? It's going to be different. different. Yes. You can't prepare throw it at them. them. Oh, mm -hmm. you got to do this, 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 this. One thing that I did not prepare for okay. was they were gone for a year. Okay. We were the both father and mother. Mm -hmm. We're the disciplinarian. disciplinarian. Yeah. And so if things were going a certain way, the household was running. Yes. So they come in. 
and all of a sudden, especially when it. you have babies, I guess that's it's like it. you're doing yeah. it wrong. Yeah. No, no, this isn't. Yeah. And yeah. it was really hard. Yeah. So go that back to the that reintegration back yes. into the family. And there was nothing to reintegrate because, yeah. well, we had Vietnam. How yeah. did that work? It didn't. So yeah. there was that reintegration. Wow. Was like okay, let's let's you do things different. Go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for him coming back, it was like. Uh, the kids, they would kind of look at me and look at him because now we have two different uh, parenting styles. Yes. Because you have a soldier, yeah. a, an officer. A soldier yes, <laughs> yes. <old. laughs> and yeah. he had, in his position, yeah. he he was over soldiers. He was commanding soldiers. Yes. He'd say something, get done. <laughs> well, you know, you got kids that are <laughs> six, different. seven years old. Yeah. You can't give an order in that child's life. Yeah. Like, yes, sir. <laughs> You know, so then no I no white look. glove inspection. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, so it, and yeah. it was kind of like, all right. So the now you have kids that are confused. Who are you gonna yeah. listen to? Yeah. Who are you gonna listen to? Yeah. We listened to mom for a year. Yeah. And now dad comes in. Yeah. It's and so, taking his authority. Yeah. In the household. Yeah. How does that work for wow. mentality of an officer? Yeah. That's high ranked, he's up here, he's commanding, uh -huh. he's doing all of this, uh -huh. and then he comes home and it's like, no, 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 what are you doing? <laughs> Wait, did you fix that leak? Yeah. You know, kind yeah. of thing. Uh -huh. And I think for for the most part, a lot of the young <laughs> wives, mm -hmm. I still see that now. Yeah. They expect the, the soldier to come back and fall into exactly how they left before. And they're tired yeah. because they probably want to give some of the responsibility that they've been carrying as a double parent. Yes. In their absence. Yeah. And it needs some time for them to be able to yeah. reintegrate. I know I keep saying that word, but yeah, it has that to is be the a most process important. It, yes. that you just can't like, okay, you back, here's a baby, here's responsibilities. <laughs> right. That's, that can't be done. It needs to be a process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a learning process yeah. because so many things were being done differently mm -hmm. or new things happened. Yeah. You have a new baby, then yeah. things are different. Yeah. Or we had some soldiers that uh, came into the family uh -huh. and they have a new child. It's like mm -hmm. this child, it, they were born when you yeah. were gone yeah. and that child's almost a year old. Yeah. So oh. you have their baby afraid so, of them. So, so. The bonding. Yeah. How do you bond? Yeah. yeah. So we had to work. Well, I had to work a lot with families to try and help them yes. with that process. Yeah. And I had that. I was grateful with my kids. Um, what I did mm -hmm. because of my background, I, I had read books. Well, and I good. thought, okay, yeah. I got to do something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We would go to church. Okay. And the kids would pick a teddy bear. Mm -hmm. And the teddy bear was dad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So everywhere oh. we went, we would yeah, take I, a teddy bear, yeah. and it was dad. Yeah. So, um, and there were different situations where, well, what, what do you think dad would think? He would yes. say, what? So if you were to ask my grown children now, 28, 29. I was going to say, how old are these babies now? They're grown. Yes. What babies are they on? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Today we had a new one. Yes, congratulations on Thank the you. new grandbaby. You. Today. <laughs> yes. yes. But God, um, trying to just uh, make sure that they're part. They're mm -hmm. still part of the soldier that's not there. Yes. Because that's important for them to know that there's no, and working with families with trauma, as you guys were talking in the yeah. other segment, is very important for them to feel that they're not abandoned because mm -hmm. that's their children. They yeah. don't understand. They don't. That uh, the, the parent did not leave them because yes. something's more important yes. than they are. Yes. And just try to make that soldier that's gone part of every day, yeah. daily life. Yes. There wasn't a day that went by that we didn't mm. talk about dad, yeah. but in a positive way. Yeah. So to this day, the kids will, we didn't, we not that they didn't miss you, honey, <laughs> yes. but they didn't experience him missing because you life. made sure that he there was he, he was not there physically, right, right? But you made sure that he was represented, mm -hmm. whether it was the dolls, I mean the teddy bears yeah. that they did, or the phone calls that you were able to get if they had an air mm -hmm. what's a air phone satellite, a satellite right. phone or whatever. You did that to make sure that he wasn't, and there was a sacrifice on the part of the military mm -hmm. member that deploys that a lot of people that doesn't experience that 
really don't know the level of sacrifice that oh, yeah. is made by not only the service member, yeah. but yeah. the families of the service member. My heart broke when you just said that your child at that age, he's an adult now, but endured mm -hmm. a negative name that his father was being called when yeah. he was fighting for their freedom of free speech. I know. Yeah. People really don't understand the the day to day sacrifices of our military members. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's 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 a reintegration. So him coming back, I had to acknowledge mm -hmm. that he was in charge of all of these people. Yes. And at home <laughs> I needed to kinda of chill back up. Okay. And let him breathe. So okay. even with that, uh -huh. we're not thinking or acknowledging, oh, does he have PTSD? What happened? What's mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. And that's not part of it until mm -hmm. we start noticing yes. different, and, and the people living with the soldier are the ones that start noticing okay. something's okay. different. Okay. And we like to say different, not wrong. Okay. Because when you go, something's wrong, it's like, That's okay, negative. Yeah. yeah. But it's different. And, and yeah. I want to say, so yeah. if we look at the soldier, uh -huh. they deploy. Mm -hmm. They're gone for three, six, nine months, a year, whatever yes. the duration of rotations are uh -huh. going now. And on a, the initial call for Iraq, orders were actually for three to five years. They didn't know how long the, the wow. war would last. Yeah. And look back to that. World yeah. War II. Okay. You know, they, they were long wars. Yeah. So there was an unknown. When the soldier gets mm -hmm. that we're coming back home, mm -hmm. now you have to go see the medical people and all that. Yes. And here's what we see. We have a culture within the, the military okay. of mm -hmm. you don't raise your hand and mm -hmm. say there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because now if you raise your hand, they go, oh, we're gonna have to keep you from your family okay. longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Wow. No, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, my, my, my spouse, my children, yeah. they're waiting to see yeah. me, and you're not going to go let me in, reintegrate with mm -hmm. them because yeah. you say I need observations, I need to do this. So what they do is... They mask it. I'm fine. They, yeah. they check it. that Absolutely. block. Yeah. And then they go back, and that's where it's the suppressed. problems... It's suppressed. Yes. It's suppressed. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad that you can't be open... No. And say, you know, I need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. because you will be penalized. Yes. With the yes. threat of not seeing your family or being able to, you know, yeah. get back into society. Mm -hmm. That is just. On top of that, oh gosh. <laughs> is, yeah. as she mentioned, Special Operation uh, Command. That's a whole nother level. So yes. we look at security clearance yep. and yes. special missions. Yes. When you start to raise your hand, they, mm -hmm. oh. We're going to have to pull duty. you Absolutely. from your teams. Yeah. yeah. Well, those teams are another family. Yes. Literally, it's, you know, that's the, the, the you know, soldier that yeah. I will live and die yes. with. Yes. And, and the Like a band of brothers, yes. that bond And, and so have. if we look at that moral injury yeah. again, yeah. I cannot injury. let yes. them down. Yeah. And I was just recently talking to a... Uh, uh, a former special for or a Navy SEAL okay. veteran who mm -hmm. who had actually done the the combat and then the medic side of this, wow. and then he's like, I'm I'm done. I'm ready to do something else yes. uh, in the military. <laughs> Deal one out, uh -huh. but to yeah. do something different. Mm -hmm. and, and what they found is, mm -hmm. they only report a fraction mm -hmm. of what really happened to them because yeah. they know it'll be detrimental on their careers, and they won't be able to be there. And as this this uh, individual said be benched yeah. and, and then and so it, it's changing who mm -hmm. they are and it's, I can't ask for help right because and I'll be penalized and so I'm gonna try to go back into to my civilian yeah. not my civilian life but oh. my my garrison life yes. we'll put that way back mm -hmm. with okay. with spouse and children uh -huh. and try to keep this under wraps that's hard to navigate. Exactly. Because, because you need help, but yes. you're afraid to ask for help because you'll be penalized for yeah. asking for help. And yeah. then you want to play like, you know, uh, all is normal, but it's not. And you mm -hmm. realize it's not. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the uh, service member realizes it's not, but they're, right. they can't ask. It's like a circle. It's it like is. It's like a dog on it if is, you do, it a continues. dog on if you don't. And we were at a conference um, just not too long ago, I believe it was in uh, April. April. Uh -huh. And we're in a with IVAT in Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii. And yeah. so you have combat soldiers. Yeah. And then you have 
we'll just say these mental health people mm -hmm. that will be out there somewhere uh, saying that, oh, I'm a combat soldier. And so it's like, wait a minute. And literally, I, I was heated because I lived this. Yes. I've talked to soldiers. Yes. It's like, we will not talk to them because my career will be over. Okay. They're, if they have a clearance, it's done. Yes. So then the families are the ones that are struggling, struggling. to try and uh, keep life up with this soldier that needs help, yes. but yet he won't get help. He's still, part, he's still in the military. Yes. And so what's happening here? here? The disconnect is that, and I think Jason mentioned it in okay. your other segment, mm -hmm. that it's, it's really hard for a service member Two things. Mm -hmm. Number one is to get the help they need yes. and risking their security clearance, their job, their, their position, yeah. everything. Yes. And um, and you could say that number two would be mm -hmm. finding the right person to talk to. Exactly. Because if you go the way that they want you to, the way that they say, mm -hmm. oh, we have all these resources, mm -hmm. you know, for, for veterans, for combat veterans mm -hmm. specifically, mm -hmm. and um, no one's going unless you're no longer in that position then and even then it's yeah. really hard because of the stigma yes there's such a stigma. yeah and i've talked to different um ptsd groups okay and i think there's got to be two different dynamics they really look okay. at one is the service member who's out mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. those who are in and redeploying yes. and going okay. through those cycles again okay. I, I, what i see is two complete different, different. modalities of treatment Yes, absolutely. And that in itself, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you have these soldiers that are like, I don't need to deal with that. Or like he had said before, uh -huh. you get someone that's talking to you and they're trying to talk about what's affecting them. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I mean, these guys are trained to body language. Mm -hmm. They, they, can they look at C. Yeah. yeah. They can assess. And they right away pick it out. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, right now mm -hmm. you're judging me and it's not going to work. So that causes them to like yeah. stay back and yeah. be. And not get the help they need. Yeah. And if we think about this, think about the individual who's raising their hand okay. saying, I am having a problem mm -hmm. versus the one who's not. Mm -hmm. And they're self-medicating through alcohol, yeah. drugs, yeah. or whatever yeah. vices. Yeah. The one who's raising his hand, they would get the treatment. They would be returned back to service. Wow. If it all worked correctly. If it worked in the correct way. Yeah. Yes. And that's, the, that's the ideal. Yeah. However, and what they that, don't have faith in the system, so yeah. they go the other route. And where do we look at? We're looking at more divorces, yeah. more broken families, Domestic more, violence. more yeah. suicides. And the suicide rate has gone up tremendously because of the lack of, of, I guess, openness to understand what these soldiers need, what they need to heal. Again, this is such a meaty topic that really needs to be discussed, and we're pretty much out of time. Y'all gonna have to come back. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's just a serious subject. Not a lot of people are aware of it, and then those who need the help learning that they're not getting it because mm -hmm. they feel as though they're going to be penalized for it. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys are doing so much. You talked about the IVAT and the different places international you're speaking at to, to be of help that anytime you'd like to come back to our forum to sit down and talk, you are, it's an open invitation to. Okay, so I know there's going to be you. somebody on at the show who's going to want to know. I know you've already shared with your contact, but for the benefit of this particular episode, if you can let them know how to get in contact with you guys, would you please share that? Probably the easiest way would be contact me via email, and it's just going to be my, my name, Jason, J-A-S-O-N dot Frey, F-R-E-Y, at Cal, C-A-L, Baptist, B-A-P-T-I-S-T dot E-D-U. So Jason dot Frey at Cal Baptist dot E-D-U. Lorena? Oh, wow. Just try, if you know that your soldier's going to get deployed, try to see if you can. One of the things that I tell families is try to get some videos in. Uh, milestones, have mm -hmm. the recorded your, record your um, soldier saying happy birthday to your children or the first day of school or we have long-term videos that we kind of help the, the family through mm -hmm. is, yeah, yeah. 
you're dating, wow, here's some advice. Yeah. Or even, okay, so you're getting married and I won't be there. So, yeah. yeah. I get emotional when I talk I feel about it. it. I feel it. I feel because, it. Because, you know, it's real. It's very real. It's yeah. very real. We're talking about real life. So, that is going to be all, unfortunately, for this episode. They go by so quick because they're so good. But thank you for being here and spending time with us and sharing so much information and personal and professional information with us. So that's for this episode of Main Health. We invite you back for the next time. Take care and be blessed. I'm Stephanie Anderson. Bye-bye.